Do you want the details in this red to come out perfect so you can have that beautiful flower? Or say the yellows are going crazy and you just can't seem to get the sensor in your camera to hone in on this color. I know that a lot of you macro photographers can get frustrated because I've been there. I've been doing this for years. I'm a saturated woman. I love colors. So I'm gonna help you with my techniques on how I get these colors nice and rich and ready for you to post process when you're done with your shoot. So let's get to it. Hi, I'm Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, and this is the place where we talk about macro and landscape photography, post-processing, equipment, behind the scenes, you name it, and we will chat about it. So some of you may not know about my macro photography live chat show. It's a blast. I have a great time with a bunch of people that chat about macro photography. The last show, I did a deep dive on photographing those saturated colors. So I'm going to share that video with you now because I feel it's so important and some of you guys may just not have time to watch a show. Yes, reds are difficult. What a perfect time to talk about red and roses and deep colors because it's Valentine's Day. And we got to play with this. This is a common problem when it comes to macro photography. The main thing that I want to share with you is over here to this side is the actual image through Cam Ranger. So here's my hand. Okay, that's live. Oops, I just hit my composition. It's not a group. I'm not looking for composition. We're just trying to get color now. And over to the left or over this side, maybe to the right, I don't know, depending on when I cut this. This right here is straight. When I shoot from here, it goes to Lightroom. You can see a lot of different things happening. The reds are turning pink and it's just not turning out very nice. And it's because the sensor is sucking in all of the red pixels or the, or the it's not really pixels it's really the light rays that are coming in that's bouncing from this so a lot of cameras can't handle this rich color hopefully in the future maybe there's cameras out there that can do it better than my Canon but there I know there's many of you that are like me that have this problem so I love red rich colors or any kind of colors if you see my portfolio I'm a color girl just love color the richer the better for me so I have to work with this and it's taken me um, some time to really get it. So let me show you what I do and hopefully it will help you. So what I like to do first, most of the time, I like to get my stuff in camera. Okay, what I'm gonna do is take a whiteboard and place it in front of the subject and I'm gonna take a photograph of it. This is the this is the image that I took and you can see that the histogram is a little overexposed, but that's okay. It's looking good. And I'm going to go to my menu. Right now it's under auto white balance, but I want to put it under, under custom white balance. I'm going to put it under custom white balance. And this is the image that I'm going to set. So I'm going to push set. It's telling me that I need to make sure this is what I want the white balance to be. I need to set it to this little dial, which I will do right now. I'm going to move it over to this, which is custom. And I'm good to go. So, okay, we're set. So as I'm looking at the histogram, one thing that I am noticing is that the R red is perfect. Green and blue is very, very low that's okay we'll go ahead and try to get this up in the middle and then i'll share with you what is happening so let's move this and we're going to you can see here at the bottom that it's underexposed by two stops and i'll go ahead and i'll leave it at f11 and i'll bump it up the two stops and we'll take the shot now so the histogram has move the green and the blues up but look at your reds 
see how it's pointing all the way to the right? You can see that it's pointing all the way to the right. Please don't pay attention to this histogram. We are paying attention to the RGB histogram when we do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you. This is way blown out of proportion. This may be very dark, but look at how nice that is. So we have to play with this in an even tone. And what I want to do now is I'm going to change it. Instead of going to two stops, I'll go down one stop and let's see if I can get a little bit more detail in the darker areas. And I am. Now let's show you it. We'll get rid of so you can see that it's still kind of clipping to the right. So this might be some problems in here, but we might be able to bring this down and increase the shadows is what I'm thinking. So, but let's show you. I have a little bit more details in the shadow area. It is a little, it's starting to clip. I could see it. That means it's getting too, there's too much saturation in that color. So there's a couple ways that you could fix it. You could light it with a different gel, which is a little bit more complicated. A lot of people don't like to do that, but you can. So another thing you could do is you could play with black to tone down the light hitting the subject. See? So that really makes a big difference. So I'm taking some of the black paper and just giving it some shadow where I feel like the rich color is just going to be too much compared to the rest of the reds. So this happens with, a, like I said, very rich colors. It's not just red. But these are different ways for you guys to play with this. And I think this is probably, let me see, it's popping up in Lightroom right now. Yeah, I'm loving it because it has some depth. Okay, another way that I will work with color issues is in Kelvin. So I have the rose here, I've got some light. So it's on Kelvin and then this. Now you can see, blow sickle goes 2500. And then if you wanna get it too, if you get it warm, that's gonna to be too warm. 5500 is, we'll do 5000. 5500 is daylight. Let's see how that works. And let's look. I'm looking at the RGB. I figured it would be better just to show you in Photoshop the Kelvin. It's just so you could see it straight up in your face. So when we go over here to the right where it says 5000, this is straight from camera. I haven't done anything with this uh, image. Please, whatever you guys do, make sure you get your composition set, everything the way you like first if, when you go through all this uh, work of getting the color correct. I admit that I was in a rush trying to get this ready for you. This is the day before the show. <laughs> oh, Janice should not be procrastinating. But I didn't think about doing this until the last second, to tell you the truth. And look at how cool this is right in here. But anyways, I wanted to share with you some of the uh, way it would look. So, of course, this also depends on what kind of lighting you have initially on the flower itself. That will depend on what type of Kelvin you would like to use. But you can usually fix your color issues by changing the Kelvin in the camera. So you can see the difference. This is 5,000. And this is 2,950 in your camera settings under the Kelvin. So as you get lower in the Kelvin, it becomes, the image becomes bluer. But if your light source is very orange and has an orange cast on the flower, it will really help you. All right, let's get back to the program. Now in the show, around 14 minutes and 35 seconds, I went into Lightroom to discuss even more about 
you know, the saturation issues that we have. And I also talked about printing because if you do not pay attention to printing, when you get your prints, you'll have no detail. So that is in the macro show and I highly recommend that you check out the show for sure. If you'd like to dive into the 14 minutes and check out printing, then check it out right in here and know that you can do this. Practice, ask questions down below in the comment section. All right, see you next Thursday. Cheers.